Hello and welcome to this tutorial about the three-point bending beam modeling in Hyperworks. We will cover different models uh, in uh, one-dimensional modeling, two-dimensional modeling and three-dimensional modeling as well as a quick topology optimization in OptiStruct. First of all, let's look at uh, the geometric properties as well as the boundary conditions. We have a three-point bending uh, beam with the measurements of uh, 50 mm safe and uh, 10 mm thick and the width is 280 mm. The boundary conditions are set apart of uh, 140 mm and the structure is loaded with a force in the middle of a roughly uh, 55 kN. Okay. Um, now we will cover at first the one dimensional modeling and I will build this from the ground up so you can follow step by step. Alright. First, um, let's open Hypermesh. We'll set that that you can see the screen as a whole. Alright. Um, for one dimensional modeling, we jump right into Hyperworks, for there is no need to. Uh, build a geometry in a CAT program, you can, you can do that easily in Hyperworks itself. So you go on Geom and first what you want to create is nodes. As you can see here we have um, we have nodes to create uh, for the boundaries of the beam, and the point where we want to introduce a load or a boundary conditions. So we need for the one-dimensional modeling where we do not model two dimensions. In this case we just model the x dimension and y and z dimension are included numerically. So we need a point here, a point here, a point here, a point here and a point here. So we, if we have our origin in coordinate system right in the middle we have the point 0, 0, 0, 7, 70, 0, 0, 130, 0, 0, and so on. You can guess that. Okay, now let, let's create the points as well here in uh, Geom Nodes. Another possibility would be in Geometry Create Nodes XYZ, which leads to the same panel. Okay, first node is 0, 0, 0. Then we had 70 and 140 and the same in the minus direction. Now as you don't see the nodes here, you can guess one here, but you can also press control and the middle mouse button then you have this, uh, the view centered and you get to know the whole picture. Now the possibility would be to use um, the coordinate views here on the top. So the geometry for this is set. Now we can begin with the material modeling process. We create a material at first. In this uh, case MUD1 as a card. We call it steel. And you check that button here, card edit material upon creation. And now you can enter the values. In this case, we need just uh, the Young's modeloidal and the Poisson's ratio. As these are the, um, the values for seal, we can go with them and click return. Now you see in the model tree that we have a material here. Next thing to do is we create a property. In this case, a property is a P beam uh, with a P beam card. As a beam allows to model um, bending moments as well as a um, artificial uh, cross section property. Okay, we can call it just um, 1D slash prop. Now it calls here for beam section. We don't have a beam section right now. We will um, 
we will uh, do one later but the material we can assign here and click on create now this card we cannot edit right now um, unless we would know all the different parameters for the um, for the cross section so we just click on return here and go in the hyperbeam view uh, model here In this area we want to um, create our beam section, we go here in the standard section of the struct bar. That's a standard section and we can edit it that it fits our values. So we have here like on the drawing 50 millimeters in height and 10 millimeters in the thickness right here. So you remember the y-axis because that is the y-axis, um, that's the axis you want to assign later on for your orientation of the beam. Okay. Now we can go back to the model view and card edit the property. Now there's a selector here, beam section, we can double click on it and choose our rectangular section 1 and the parameters for all the inertia values and so on get filled automatically. You can click return. And last but not least we create a component which we will call beam, the property we will assign and the material gets assigned also as well in the same step. Click on create. Now we got everything we need. Component, the component has a property, and the property has a material, and also the property has a cross section and the parameters it needs for the p-beam values. Now let's create the elements. One dimension, uh, bars. As you can see, you, you have uh, two selections here. Either you can create elements, bar two, or you can update existing elements. It has a node A, node B, where you want to, your bar to end. And this is the orientation we talked about earlier. So in this case, you uh, remember that the y-axis was the, the height axis, and we want the height axis to be our set axis. As you can see on the drawing here, the set axis uh, goes into the height axis from the global coordinate system. So we choose set axis here. We choose for the property the one die prop and everything else we can leave to the standard value and just click on two uh, nodes. If you are not sure if we did that correctly, we can look at the 3D element representation right here. There you can uh, click on the, the shaded elements. You can see if we did it correctly and indeed the height axis is the set axis. All right, let's change that to normal again and we can click the other elements as well. All right, now we have our model like in the drawing. Quick review, it's like that. Next thing we want to do is create the boundary conditions and forces. For this step, we need to uh, create load collectors, two of, um, of, of, of a kind. The first load collector we uh, call SPC, as it contains our constraints. Um, we don't need a card image for that. And the second one is called forces, or force or load, something like that. And now you have two load collectors. Always choose different colors for them. Nothing more uh, a pain if you uh, have your constraints and forces in the same load collector and your calculation aborts because of that. Note also that um, um, the bolt marked component is the component you're writing in currently. So you, if you want to change that, you click write and make current. So in this case, we create just uh, the, forest, uh, the force first. And we do that with analysis forces. Um, here we choose the middle node, 
and uh, the vector is in this case the, the z direction so we choose z axis here and the magnitude is minus 54,000 newtons okay now create now this uh, arrow is much too huge as you can see you can click once here uh, then it gets pretty standard as we wanted maybe increase it a little bit um, this size doesn't have any effect on the magnitude of the force it's just display options okay force is created and as you can see in red now we want to write the constraints in SPC the SPC load collector so we click right and make current click on return and click on the constraints in the constraints um, we have um, we have to think about our uh, boundary conditions how we model that in this case we want to a fixed um, a fixed boundary constraint here and I don't know what what's it called um, um, it's it's um, a boundary constraint which uh, can float in a in, in the x direction it's a lo loose bearing I could say this is a fixed bearing and that's a movable bearing for one dimensional and also two dimensional uh, elements it is um, necessary to also constrain rotational degrees of freedom for short explanation um, here are the DOFs degrees of freedom 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 1, 2, 3 is x, y, z transla translational so moving in x, moving in y, moving in z and uh, 4, 5, 6 are rotatory uh, degrees of freedom means turning around the x-axis, turning around the y-axis or turning around the z-axis so you keep that in mind in this case <coughs> let's first create the, the fixed boundary condition on the left side and we uh, will constrain every single degree of freedom for that reason okay click on create okay for the right boundary constraint we will uncheck the degree of freedom 1 click on create so the uh, translational degree of freedom x is not constrained and it's possible that uh, the bearing can move in this direction one could argue that it is not the realistic a case for a bending beam because um, also here uh, the, the material flow will be somewhat symmetrically and you can also uncheck the degree of freedom one here now the problem with that is maybe your beam um, can float away because it's not secured in one direction but we will see about that in the results now the boundary conditions are, are done next we want to create a load step this is why I analyze this load steps and we just give it a name ls1 and the type is in this case linear static we have SPC and we have a load a load collector and we choose the fitting ones in here and click on create now everything is set and we can uh, run the analysis in Optistruct we have to choose the different options in this case we just want to do an analysis and we also can introduce some other parameters here for example how many processors um, the simulation could use <coughs> excuse me and also the memory options but for this calculation uh, we can go with the default values as it will not uh, take too much memory can click on save as and just click a temporary folder and I call it here one die one d analysis I click on save I click on Optistruct for the simulation to run as you can see the simulation runs very quickly you can check on results and look at the beam now um, as I'm working with um, version 12 I think it's not possible to do the 3D uh, element representation in the Hyperview module um, but we can just 
tap the view here. No. Okay. Um, we can uh, check the values numerically or with the measurement tool. First, we want to go on the contour, and here we have the different options of the outputs be selected. Um, in this case, we want to show the displacement in the set direction. So we click displacement set and click on apply. Now we want to check the values for the different nodes. So in this case, we go to measures here and add a measure group. What we want to measure is called nodal contour. And this just works then if you have the, um, the contour plot. If you didn't plot anything on the contour, this value wouldn't be there. Okay, and we select nodal contour and then we can click on the nodes right here and we can see uh, that um, the bending down here is uh, minus 0 0.082 millimeters. The boundary conditions uh, they didn't change. Something which um, wonders me because um, I thought that uh, the points on the end on the end would go up. Hmm. Maybe I have to check my boundary conditions one more time. Yeah, sure. Um, one mistake I made was I didn't let the rotatory degree of freedom in the y direction, so around this axis, to happen. So you see here learning by doing. Let's just uh, do the analysis again. Um, analysis, constraints, and here we can go on update. And we can select the first one here. And we will uncheck the degree of freedom 5 because we want to let rotatory um, rotatory degrees of freedom, we want to let that happen. We click on update, update DOF, and now we can see the 5 is vanished here. Same valid for um, the other, accordingly. And we just click again on hop destruct. Okay, again, uh, the displacement in set, apply, measurement, add a measure group, nodal contour, and click on the points. Now you have it. I thought the values were too small. Okay, now you see you have uh, minus 0 0.18 on the middle and 0 0.211. 212 on the outside. As it is symmetric, um, you see that the boundary conditions uh, are reasonable, and I think um, that's about it for the one dimensional analysis of the uh, bending beam.